So, you want to learn Roblox Studio and learn how to script and even make your own game? Mm -hmm. Then you'll come to the right place. Of course, you can't learn how to make a game without learning the basics first, so let's begin. Also, I highly suggest you to open up Roblox Studio and follow along, since this way you will understand Roblox Studio faster and you will get a good feeling on how Roblox Studio works. But if you are on a phone, then watch along and take notes. So if you don't have Roblox Studio installed, go into the description of the video and click the first link that I put there. And then you will come to this site. It should look something like this. And then click this start creating button and now Click download studio. I don't need to download it again since I already have it installed. But if you don't have it installed then make sure to install it. Alright now let's click new base plate. If you don't see this new base plate button right here then make sure to click this new tab on the left side to end up here. Alright now let's click base plate. You might be greeted with something like this, an overwhelming amount of information. So let's close the toolbox on the left side, let's close output which is usually down here and let's close properties which is usually on the right side and let's close the home tab by double clicking on it. Alright that's way better. So first let's learn how to even move in Roblox Studio. So to move around, simply use the WASD keys and to look around, you can press and hold right click and then move your mouse around. You can also scroll in and out, just like in a Roblox game. You can also move your camera up and down by pressing the E key or the Q key. This can sometimes come in handy, so remember it. And if you want to move your camera very slowly, you can do so by holding shift and then trying to move around. Alright, now let's check the explorer tab on the right side. You might be wondering what all of these things are, so let me tell you. These are instances, and whatever is inside of them is also called an instance. So basically everything that you see here is an instance. But these, the first ones in the explorer tab, even though they are instances, are actually called services. And when you start scripting, you will come across that name pretty often. So remember, services equal important. And let me tell you which are the most important ones. So keep in mind the workspace, the players, replicated storage, server script service, server storage, starter GUI, and starter player. These are probably the most important ones when making a game, so keep that in mind. Now let me explain each one of them. The workspace is basically everything that you can see. So this white part and this huge grey base plate can be seen all thanks to workspace. So basically anything that is 3D and you want people to see, make sure to place it in the workspace. Next up is the player service. This is also very this is also very important because with this you can see all the players that joined your game. I can even prove it to you right now. And as you can see, my player is actually inside of the player service. There is also these things that are inside every player but I will explain that in another video. So now let's check the next thing which is replicated storage. And this is basically a place where you want to organize your stuff. And also this is used to, as the service says, replicate. And if you don't know what replication means, it basically means to copy. So let's say you have a system that spawns in coins every 5 seconds. So basically that system will get the coin model that is inside of here, inside the replicated storage, it will copy it and then it will place the copy inside of the workspace. I might have given a bad example but I hope you understand the point. 
Next up is the server script service. This one is very important. Mostly because you will place 90% of your important scripts inside of here. So stuff like systems, data scripts, giver scripts, and basically anything that the player actually doesn't need to see. And the cool thing about server script service is that the stuff inside of it won't actually be loaded onto the player, which means less lag. And the same principle goes for server storage. Alright, now starter GUI. You probably know what it means, and I probably don't need to explain much here. And basically, whatever GUI you put inside of here will be copied and given to every player that joins the game. And that's basically how you can make stuff like this. Alright, now let's check starter player. You won't be using starter player alone. You will most of the time be using the things that are inside of starter player. And that is starter character scripts and starter player scripts. And these two are pretty self-explanatory. Basically, any script that you put inside of starter character scripts will be copied and placed inside of every character that spawns in your game. Well, every player character. Same goes for starter player scripts. Every script that you put inside of here will be copied and placed inside of every player that joins the game. Alright, now that we explored the explorer tab, let's check the home tab. But before we learn the stuff that is inside of the home tab, I will give you a challenge at the end of the video. And I want you to try and complete it so that I can see that you actually learned in today's video. Alright, now let's check the home tab by double clicking on it. Okay, there might be a lot of buttons here, but don't worry, I will teach you the most important ones. So, I want you to keep in mind the select tool, the move tool, the scale tool, the rotate tool, the part button, the game settings button, and the play button. So first, let's learn about the part button. This is basically how you spawn in parts. You just simply click on it and you will spawn a part inside of workspace, as you can see. You might have also noticed that this little arrow underneath the part button and if you click it, it will give you different shapes to spawn in. We won't be using these shapes in today's video because they are too complicated. So let's delete them by selecting the select tool and then click and dragging your mouse to select all of them and then pressing the delete key. You can also go the long way and select them individually by holding shift and then selecting each part in the that you want to delete and then right clicking and click delete oh and also you can undo anything that you did by pressing ctrl z and also if you want to redo or better said undo the thing that you've undone you can do so by pressing ctrl y and this is pretty useful all right, now let's check the select tool out. This basically allows you to select any object in the game. And that's it. Literally nothing special about it. So let's check the move tool. You can select the move tool by going up here and clicking it, or you can use the shortcut control 2. And now these arrows appeared, which indicate that we are using the move tool. And also, I want you to keep in mind that these aren't just any regular arrows. These are actually arrows that represent the three axes. The red one is representing the x-axis, the green one is representing the y-axis, and the blue one is representing the z-axis. And if you're confused on what these x, y, z axes are, then basically just keep in mind that they are used to position yourself inside of a 3D space. Alright, now let's test the move tool out by moving the part a little bit. And as you can see, if you drag one of these arrows, the part moves along that arrow. And if you want to move a part very precisely, you can go to the model tab and turn off this check mark right here. And that will allow the part to move exactly where your mouse is. And this check mark basically allows you to move your part by this amount. 
so whatever you put so whatever number you put inside of here the part will move by that amount so if i turn this check mark on my part will move by one stud and if you're wondering what a stud is is basically a unit of measurement that roblox uses and this is how big one stud is so this one square that you see here is one stud all right now let's go back to the home tab and let's check the scale tool but before that let's actually duplicate the part and to duplicate something we can simply select the thing that we want to duplicate then press ctrl c and then ctrl v and that's how you duplicate parts you can also duplicate stuff in a way easier way so let's press ctrl z and ctrl z again to delete the part and let's learn how to duplicate parts in an easier way so first select the part that you want to duplicate and press ctrl d it might not look like it but the part actually has been duplicated as you can see on the right side so let's move the duplicated part by dragging one of these arrows and as you can see we have two parts inside of the workspace now let's check the scale tool by selecting it up here or by pressing the ctrl 3 shortcut and these little spheres indicate that we are using the scale tool and scaling the parts is pretty easy just drag one of these spheres and the part will scale in that direction there are also two things which are very convenient for scaling parts and that is this and this you might be wondering how i did that so let me tell you if you want to do this you can simply hold control and then drag any of the spheres on your screen and that's how you scale parts in both directions but if you want to scale the part in all directions simply hold the shift and drag one of these spheres also if you want to scale your part very smoothly you can go to the model tab again and turn this check mark off and now just like the move tool the scale tool will scale the part very smoothly now let's duplicate the part again by pressing ctrl d let's select the move tool by pressing ctrl 2 let's move the duplicated part again and now let's check the rotate tool by going up here and selecting rotate or by pressing ctrl 4 now these circles indicate that we are using the rotate tool and rotating parts is pretty easy just click and hold one of these circles and turn the part it might be a little confusing on how to rotate parts as a beginner so i suggest you to practice a bit if you also want to rotate your part very smoothly you can go to the model tab again and turn this check mark above the move check mark off and now your part will move very smoothly all right now we learned how to manipulate parts now let's check the game settings button this is very important since, th since this is how you save your game to Roblox. And there are also other things like badges, developer products, private servers, server size, and so much more that I don't even, even know how many there are. But basically, if you want to change some settings about the game, you can do so by going in the game settings button. It's pretty self-explanatory. And lastly, let's check the play button. There is this little arrow underneath the play button, so if you click that, it gives you three options. So if you press play, the game starts just like a normal game, as you can see. But if you press play here, this will start the game, but instead of spawning on this white part right here, we will spawn where the camera is. So if my camera is all the way up here, and if I press play here, my character will spawn all the way in the sky, as you can see. And this is very useful from time to time, so keep that in mind. And lastly, we have the run button. And this basically starts the game without your player and without your character. So if we press run, the, the game will start without my player or my character. And you might have also noticed that these parts have actually fallen and they don't actually stay in the sky. And you might be wondering how do you fix that? Well, it's very easy. So click the stop button that is right here. And then let's go to the parts that keep falling down. 
So selected all the parts that you want to keep in the air. For example, let's just keep this part inside in the air and let's click the anchor button that is right above here. And now if we press run, this part will stay in the air while the other two will fall to the ground. Alright, now I challenge you to make a little house using the things that you learned today. And I challenge you again to prove to me that you made that house by going in my Discord server and sending an image of your house inside of hashtag creations and typing the message hashtag challenge1. And lastly, I saved the best part for the end of the video. If you liked the video, I want you to leave a like down below and if you want to learn more about Roblox Studio, then make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to be notified when I upload the next Roblox Studio tutorial. Also, if I didn't explain something that good, then please leave a comment down below telling me what I can improve on. And now, see you in the next video.